Hey everybody, welcome to Stock Abilities. Today I'm going to be talking about the cryptocurrency as well as the US dollar. A lot of hype going on with the futures market and everything and uh, kind of an inflation you're seeing on the cryptocurrency Bitcoin. And there's some altcoins that are kind of jumping up as well. And we're going to be getting into this here. It's a long video, so make sure to like, subscribe, and get ready to listen in. This is a Discord channel. If you guys want to check it out, then uh, talk more about Bitcoin and what I'm discussing here all in the channel the link will be in the description below but we're gonna get right into it here um, Bitcoin's been growing and growing and growing uh, as Coinbase claims here a 50 billion dollar plus in digital currency exchange 32 countries supported and 10 million customers served I'm showing this one here because this is one of the bigger ones this is Coinbase in particular if you're not familiar and it's a place to buy and sell digital currency, as it says. Bitcoin, Eris from Litecoin. Now there's other ones that you can uh, purchase as well in different various markets. We're going to get into what Bitcoin is initially here, though. It's a decentralized currency that uses peer-to-peer -peer technology, which enables all functions such as currency issuance, transaction processing, and verification to be carried out collectively by the network. Essentially, it's a, a digital currency that's free from, as they say, government manipulation or interference. The problem is that there's no central authority to ensure that things run smoothly or to back the value of a Bitcoin you essentially mine it and mine it and mine it and it, as the years go by there's going to be lots to mine and then it's going to hit a cap if it lasts that long we're going to go a little more detail here this is the current value of bitcoin as you can see it was rather bland in the early years and then it went up and up and up in 2016 17 it kind of spikes up here almost on a vertical line which is not exactly a good sign you can see here um, to the Dow Jones, it's coming close to the value of that. And the comparative value doesn't really make sense. The Dow Jones took literally years and years to get to this point. Had a big jump, 95 to 2000. And then from there, it's been going up. But this is a core foundation of the market. Uh, Bitcoin is more of a speculation currency at this point rather hyperinflated you got the s p index apparently they perceive it as more value the intrinsic value of bitcoin is more like a thousand dollars a little bit further you can go into the definition of what a tech bubble is uh, as they go into detail here announced an unsustainable market rise attributed to increased speculation in technology stocks so you're kind of seeing that with but Bitcoin and a lot of articles I'll be getting into here in a little bit. Tech bubble is highlighted by rapid share price growth and high valuations based on standard metrics like price earnings, ratio, or price and sales. There's no one really buying or selling crypto. It's more like a gold silver investment. No one's really using it in that sense. The bubble theory is that uh, you have a rise in the market prices of an asset class and above its true values. As you can see from the chart I was showing a little earlier, it's pretty much a vertical line up as of the last couple of years. It's not very sustainable and it's going up and up and up further. Based on the cryptocurrency, it's kind of a new concept. You don't know if it's going to continue or if it's going to implode on itself. But historically, no matter what's it, whether it's tech or whatever it may be, it always inevitably implodes on itself. We go here and some of these hype articles here where it's going to reach a multi-trillion dollar value from the Winklevoss twins, if you guys aren't familiar. These are the people that said that the Facebook guy stole their idea, but they had a very limited view of Facebook and the value of Facebook and all of that kind of stuff. And now they're claiming they're these geniuses because they put a lot of money in it and it exploded on that. And they're basically the... Uh, First, celebrity billionaires, as you could say. The ultimate answer is that when you have the Winklevoss twins and you have Seeking Alpha as some of the two biggest sources of those indicating to get into Bitcoin, it's not very promising for its future. They're projecting here 142,000, 150,000. That might be a little bit more realistic. 
and before it implodes. And then as you can see here, the end date of when mining becomes unprofitable determines the maximum value of Bitcoin. When all the mining is gone and it's just people trading back and forth. There's no real incentive to continue mining the value and the costs for the tech and everything. You're still US, using US dollars and you're still transferring that money. Going a little bit further here, Funny enough, the same source here from Seeking Alpha, when and if U.S. moves to temporarily suspend digital currency, the ensuing panic and lack of liquidity will cause digital currencies to lose most of their value. And this is from the same exact people that were just hyping it earlier. Uh, they change back and forth all the time with their opinions. So having Seeking Alpha as one of the main sources for the hype, among a variety of other questionable sources, makes... Bitcoin investment a little bit iffy. If you're holding from a very low value, I could see the reason why you'd want to hold, but it's still speculative nonetheless. Going a little bit further here, you got gold, you got silver, you got platinum, you got palladium. Probably mispronouncing that. The short answer is, uh, although these are charts dating back uh, 1986, uh, gold, silver, platinum, and all of these have been in trading for years and years and years, just like spices and all of these things. They've been around forever. You know, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency has been around five, ten years at this point. And for most of the time, other than the last couple of years, it didn't really do much. Going a little bit further here, you have to keep in mind that whether you want to believe that Bitcoin is truly uh, not really government backed or anything like that, you still got to pay taxes on the Bitcoin via the transactions that you make and what have you. It's a very highly taxed commodity, as you can say. So there is taxes associated and ignorance of these taxes will not end well for you as uh, this particular article puts ignore, ignore the IRS at your own peril. Only 100, 802 people reported Bitcoin profits to the IRS in 2015. All these fees are going to come back to you and bite you heavily. So even if you have a lot of Bitcoin value, as you say, and you're not really paying the taxes on it, it's going to end up eating up most of that profit that you're going to receive overall. So I wouldn't be ignoring this. They will catch up to you. And if cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and all of them are as, really as transparent as they say, I'd be a very, very big worried, bit worried rather, haha, <laughs> in regards to this scenario. A little bit further, this is kind of a, a little bit of an aggressive article, but uh, as they refer to it, Bitcoin is like something else. The fallacy is so prevalent frankly because bitcoin really isn't much like anything else there are similarities between bitcoin say the us dollar or gold or even tulips but the differences far outweigh the similarities uh false comparison between dissimilar things an example of the boss analogy bitcoin is secure now bitcoin uh, i'm sure you guys have read articles there's uh, criminals are running rampant with all kinds of schemes going on uh, millions of dollars here getting stolen millions of dollars there systems being cracked into it's not as secure as they say even through basic social engineering and people being a little silly with their money and as they say bitcoin is money and it's not really true not so with bitcoin it's commodity is a speculative vehicle it's sort of like tesla and you're investing in elon musk there's no guarantee that this is going to be going up and up in the future. It's good to take some profit and hold it for the long term if you think speculation is going to prove to be that it goes up and up and up. But I wouldn't just hold 100% of it. If you're in profit, I would sell a portion while you can. Bitcoin has intrinsic value outside of its mineability. That's not really true. People initially that were investing in Bitcoin, they're mining it because of the value of it. There is some tech behind it that's looking promising into the future but that's cryptocurrency in general bitcoin itself is becoming a little bit unsustainable going a little bit further here you got some articles here about big banks block client access to sunday's bitcoin futures so people can't even buy into the bitcoin futures because they're afraid of the questionable legal aspects to it so a little bit further here this is just a steam article it doesn't really mean much but guy's telling you a little story about how his friend invested in it or tried to 
but uh, his bank wouldn't allow him to in regards to association with fraud going a little bit further td bank prevents customers from buying bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies you can find a whole bunch of articles like this online There's a lot of banks restricting it uh, td bank is no small bank there's bigger banks than td that aren't accepting crypto as well Going a little bit further, uh, you can go in and read about smart contracts. Smart contracts is not a new concept, as you can see, 1996, according to Wikipedia. Going a little bit down further here. But they're trying to more evolve the smart contracts, Bitcoin and Ethereum, and all of these ones, uh, or Ethereum, I should say, are getting more into it. Ethereum is a little bit more stable, so if you're looking into one to get into, I'd try to focus more on that than Bitcoin. Bitcoin's only popular because it's the first of its kind. Now there's other associations it's doing, but it's getting to a point of unsustainability where it's going to have to do a correction of some sort. Now uh, a little bit more positive cryptocurrency in general. Uh, individuals, cryptocurrencies are digital and cannot be counterfeited or reversed arbitrarily by the sender as with credit card chargebacks. You got immediate settlement, no delays, you got lower fees, you got better identity theft protection because of how it works, and you got access to everyone, you got decentralization, which can be argued as a good or a bad thing, and you got recognition at a universal level. Now keep in mind, not very many people even know what Bitcoin is, so it's still rather new, and cryptocurrency in general is still rather new. So if you go on the street and you ask someone, chances are they're not going to know what you're talking about. Going a little bit further here, we're going to go and go right into fiat money. And this is like USD, yen, and all that stuff. Uh, it has both its positives and negatives. It has a backing from the banks, from these other people, from these financial institutions, from the government, and from the ones that essentially print the money. The problem is that this can create hyperinflation and then it could make your currency worthless. There's been mortgage crisis, there's been banking crisis, essentially unsustainable inflation, hyperinflation to be particular. The FDIC backs up your bank deposits up to $250,000. So if you put a lot of money in, you got some backing in regards to that if you do this with cryptocurrency you're basically out of luck if anything happens to it there's no security there's no backing it's decentralized decentralized completely and there's just nothing to support it or sustain it at least here you got at least some kind of backing even though it's subject to the same issues as cryptocurrency with hyperinflation and potential crash of it all but that's just something you got to deal with no matter what currency you use Going a little bit further, you can look into more about the financial institutions that you use if you were curious about the security of them, your bank rate, uh, not really promoting it or anything. I just found it as a good, viable source if you want to read more about your bank and how secure it actually is. They go up and down, sort of like depending on which uh, ICO or initial coin offering you invest in can be more secure or less secure and alternative uh, coins to Bitcoin. And going a little bit further, hyperinflation, if you guys aren't familiar, occurs when there's a continuing, often accelerating, rapid increase in the amount of money that is not supported by corresponding growth in the output of goods and services. Cryptocurrency and Bitcoin is more of a speculative uh, holding commodity. No one really uses it. No one really uses it back, like with the gold and silver. They back literally with gold and silver and the FDIC to back your money and keep it more secure via hedging and all of that kind of thing. Beyond that, uh, there's a threat of the Bitcoin futures here. There's uh, People say it's going to go up, it's going to go down, it's going to go left, it's going to go right. Yeah, no one's really sure what the future of Bitcoin and the futures market and all of that will happen. Uh, something to keep in mind is that only this uh, smaller one, it's not really small, just opened on the 10th of the uh, bigger one, the largest one, it, as they say, the largest derivatives exchange in the world opens on the 18th. So looking forward to the 18th and into the next year is when you'll really know whether it's going to be shorted or not. So far it's going up, which is good, not really bad. Uh, ultimately, what you want to look for is support, as you can see here with uh, Putin and the uh, Ethereum guy here. I can't recall his name at the moment. 
but you you want to look for support you want to look for government contracts you want to look for some kind of tech backing and supporting the idea of the cryptocurrency you don't want to just hop in and do whatever you don't want to hop in with bitcoin its intrinsic value is way less than what it's trading at you want something sustainable you want something that's going to grow over time ethereum and there's a lot of other altcoins that are looking pretty good Bitcoin's a little bit overvalued, so I'd look into the secondary ones. I mean, if you hold Bitcoin, I'd hold it at this point. If you're holding uh, uh, way, way lower, but I would still sell portions because, as with any investment, there's always a speculative aspect to it. If you guys like this video, I believe I'm going to be ending it at this part here. You can uh, stop by my Discord channel and let me know. You can leave comments in the, com the YouTube video below if you have any more questions or you want to share your own input make sure own input make sure to leave it in the comments below as well thanks for stopping by and have a nice day